Hey everybody, welcome to Hope Something Sticks. I'm Bert. This one is Matt. And today we're going to talk about 2020, everybody's favorite topic. I had a great year, to start off with that. I had a pretty good year too, except for, you know, not going out at all. Yeah, suck on that. Whatever. Going out was overrated to begin with. I'm glad everyone finally realized that. <laughs> yes. Introverts did not have their lives change too much. Not trying to discount how terrible it was for some people, but... And other people who were in abusive relationships having to fucking deal with that even more so. Yeah. But it's not yeah, like... It must have been it's, terrible. It's not like the quarantine denied you the, the avenue of, of leaving, but leaving that relationship became that much more difficult. Yeah, and it, well, and also the reason to leave the relationships uh, much more apparent. You'd think. But being in an abusive relationship makes it... I don't know. It's tough. Anyway. So, yeah, it was a pretty crazy year. And uh, it's also crazy to think that the the big crazy thing of the year was that Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter accident. I still haven't really come to grips with that. I, t I mean, I was visiting you out in Arizona when that happened, and it was just like... It's kind of... It's just nuts. I don't know. I was in shock yeah. reading it on the headlines. Yeah, I think... I think it happened just before you got here, because I, I remember... When I first heard about it, it was uh, Sharon and I were, I think, either yeah, driving to a sushi restaurant, and yeah, I mean, it, it was crazy. I mean, it was all over the news, and uh, oh, his memoriam. That's what it was. We were getting tacos. That must have that must that must have been it. Yeah, and the memorial service was happening that day. Yeah, intense. Yeah, I'm a fucking helicopter crash. What? Yeah. Well, just kind of the start. So that was, I guess, February. Yeah. That was just, we're just kind of starting to hear about COVID-19 and uh, it's kind of becoming a problem in China. Yeah, kind of. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly the word that they would like you to use. <laughs> yeah, we had kind of a little bit of a hiccup, guys. Totally under control. Yeah, then uh, President Trump uh, thought so too for a while. And that, that just kind of became the basis for his whole, I guess, how he dealt with the virus by what he said first like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And everything's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. And that just was, ignore it. That's pretty much what he's. Yeah. That's pretty much his. What he did, uh, for the entire year. Yeah. He told Bob Woodward that. He told. He yelled it. He yelled it at Jared. <laughs> just make it not be there. He even told everybody else. He told. He, he did. He's never made it a secret what his actual opinion is. You are getting the unedited edition of someone's id. That's all it is. It's just stream of consciousness. This is what I'm thinking and feeling right now, and this is what I'm going to do. He's not saying it yeah. exactly what the strategy is going to be, but he's, he's giving you the, the overall theme. And that's why everyone keeps saying, oh, I don't understand him. And I, I, oh my God, this is so shocking. Have you listened to him? <laughs> it's not shocking. He's telling you exactly what he's gonna fucking do. Nothing. Yeah, he's not gonna do shit. He doesn't want you to do shit. He wants you to follow your non-scientific gut. Never mind that China shut down a city the size of New York. Yep. But, um... It's funny because... I mean, I guess the reason why he did it and the reason why he does almost anything is... To get reelected, 
and that's what screwed him over. If he actually did this in a responsible way and actually tried to do something, he probably would have won. Yeah, that's what's really terrifying about it. Everybody was ready to just... Everybody looked to the White House for leadership. And because nobody had a plan for this shit. And if they had even a half-baked idea, or had even, like you said, tried. Yeah. But no. Yeah, the, <laughs> let's yeah. double down hard on pretending it doesn't exist. And gamble with hundreds of thousands of lives and hope that nothing happens. Oops. Yeah. It wasn't really an oops. That that was what they tried doing, and that's what they did. So, mission fucking Um, accomplished. Nice fucking job, guys. Yeah, well, it had the exact opposite effect he was hoping for. Oh, him getting fucking Um, booted out of office? So long, farewell, we're tired of your bullshit. At, uh, but also, what happened in 2020 uh, was a very interesting, well, elections. Like the, he also had the primaries, uh, which was interesting, very interesting. Um, and also, I think it was the primary that people paid attention to the most in a long time probably had the most votes in it uh, you know I mean well from the Democratic side from the Republican side you know Trump just kind of swept everything and yet no no one really paid attention to that but uh, from the Democratic side there there was a lot of different candidates there from Andrew Yang who we, we were talking about this before the show um you know, he, he wanted to give everyone a thousand dollars, and the way he phrased that, um, especially like you know during like the, the big, like say, you know times he was on TV, which is like the debates for the most part, that he, if he just explained what the hell he was talking about, where the money was going to come from, I think he would have done much better. I don't know if he would have won, uh, but maybe he would have. But um, yeah. I mean, he, he just kept saying, you know, you're going to get $1,000. Where is that $1,000 going to come from? Taxes. But where, who's going to get taxed and why? The, these large tech companies that are taking your information, and that's why they're getting taxed. So any te- tech company that takes your information, which is almost everybody, uh, and any, any application or anything you do on the internet that's free, they're taking your information. So they get taxed, uh, and then everyone gets a thousand dollars from that. I'm sure the federal government will probably get some too, and uh, everybody's happy except for the data data mining assholes. Yeah, which everyone else would be thrilled about. Right. Yeah. Right now they're just that, they got that's this a free resource, and they want to keep it that way. Or as Rod Blagojevich would say, they've got this thing, and it's fucking golden. Yep. So, and, and that I would think that'd be something both Democrats and Republicans could totally get on board with. Because nobody fucking likes <laughs> the data mining that's going on. I don't know. Repub- I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if one side comes up with a good idea. Because the other side's going to look at the other side. Namely, Republicans are just going to look at anything a Democrat comes up with and say, it's bad. So the Democrats have to... Yeah do some sort of reverse psychology kind of shit and make a Republican come up with it. Yeah, but they're not going to do that because then Republicans get credit for ideas and then they get voted for and then there's no Democrats to give the Republicans the ideas and then they just do whatever the hell they want after that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So, what? You know, murder? Can we just murder them all? Is that the, is that the solution? Uh, yeah. Let Biden uh, have his four years, and then we'll see. Those are not going to be Biden's <laughs> four years. Those are Kamala's four years. She called dibs on him. Eh, I'll see. <laughs> oh, we'll see, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, we made it to February. Yeah. Or 
we're, so, we're in March now. When the shit started hitting the fan. My bosses didn't have yeah. a plan for it, that's for sure. <laughs> Scrambling and shooting from the hip like everybody else. Yeah, March is when people were starting to get nervous and it was starting to spread. Illinois shut uh, down think... on the 17th. Yeah, well, in Arizona, they hadn't shut down yet in April. And like at the end of April, it's like, you know what, I'm working from home. So, there. Oh, you told then, that. Like, the, you told them that. Yeah, I told them that. Nice. And then, like, yeah. Uh, and so I think I worked one day from home on a Friday. Then I think the next Monday, the the company said, "Yeah, yeah, everyone just work from home now." <laughs> Good. So that's what it should have been at the start, so yeah. and it's what it should still be now. Yep. Uh, and then me and a bunch of people got laid off uh, at the end of April. Oh wow! So you were you were only working <laughs> for a grand total of what two three weeks? Uh, like a a month. Ah, okay. Like it was from the beginning of April essentially and to the end of April. Actually, wait. No, actually, no, 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 no. You know, it, it was, I actually did. Okay, never mind. I, I think it was just a few weeks because it, I, I didn't work April. It was March that, uh, that I, I started working from home on my first job in Arizona. And then I, then, because I remember, uh, they laid, all those people off on April 1st, which was very nice to lay everyone else, uh, everyone off on April Fool's Day. Yeah, nice. Good good, uh, yeah. good planning there, guys, once again. Yeah, that just exemplifies that nobody had, nobody knew what the hell they were doing. There wasn't any, wasn't a plan. The plan from on high was chaos. Yep. Yeah, then a, yeah, a lot of people lost their jobs around March, April, May, uh, and yeah, things started getting worse. Uh, and I think like end of the summer, beginning of fall, things got a little bit better, and then way, way, way worse again. <laughs> yeah, everything just started spiking again, and that's what re- yeah. that's what really started pissing me off was I got brought back in in June. So I had three, I had two and a half glorious months of working from home. It was the best two and a half months of work I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was so fantastic. I still look back on it with fondness. Anyway, uh, then the case right, numbers uh, were the infant were just as bad as they were when we shut down, and nobody gave a shit, even here in Illinois. They just started, la 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 la, let's just not pretend that these case numbers are going up. Because the death rate wasn't going up. It was just the case numbers. Yeah, but then the death rate right. went up. Then it, yeah, then it no. caught up. And then everyone's like, fuck it, the, the vaccine's going to be out soon, so. Power through. Yeah. After that's, everyone's uh, been killed. That's the strategy right now. <laughs> it's fucking brutal. Yeah. So, back to the uh, election. The The first primary was the Iowa caucus. And, man, I don't know if you remember what a clusterfuck that was. Right, the app didn't work or something that they tried. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was an app to upload or... Man, yeah, sure. Upload the numbers, uh, you know, of the votes that everyone got, and that didn't work. And so, because <laughs> then they had to write them all down, and that mail, you know, they, they was like, oh shit, like they had to like work on the fly to figure out how to get the numbers in. Yikes! And yeah, so and that wasn't even attacked. That was just incompetence, right? 
I mean, that they didn't have a good backup plan, uh, and that they didn't test the system well enough, you know, the application. Right, incompetence. Uh, yeah, they probably just, like, did, like, a small little test, and it's like, oh, well, everything fine, everything works fine in uh, perfect conditions, let's uh, not, you know, do, like, a mock yeah. test of, you know, say... Say, let's say like a quarter of all the places and just have someone there put in whatever numbers at where the polling station is and then actually know what would happen. So, uh, uh, uh. probably did not do adequate testing. Surprise, but, uh, surprise. Yeah. Don't have to tell me that one. That's what I was doing yeah. working from home, was doing software testing on my company's software. Which is fantastic, by the way, in case anyone's <laughs> listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so but uh, end up. I, I. Bernie Sanders and Buttigieg both kind of won the Iowa caucus. Nailed it. Yeah. Th- well, yeah. Like, I think one got more votes, but one got more delegates. I mean, we kind of ha- we, really we really hammered politics in every one of our other episodes. If you really wanted an analysis of these primaries, we've got it for you. <laughs> Take a look at I don't know, forty percent of our podcasts. I don't know if it's quite that much. Well, it, it came down. Right, it, it, I, it, I mean, Joe was sputtering. Then South Carolina came along. James Clyburn said, "Joe's the guy." And that was it. The Democratic Party fell in line and said, Bernie, write your death certificate now. (laughs) Basically, yeah. So, yeah, at South Carolina, that was... To his credit, he knew that's where, like, you know, his only shot was, like, after, like, losing big in the first two states. Yeah, it's because nobody wanted his ass. (laughs) Yeah, and... Well... Nobody wanted his ass in the places that were having primaries. Fair enough. You, th- those are fairly liberal Democrats in Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, and then there was Nevada, where he did okay. I think he got third. Nevada? Nevada? Uh, Nevada? But, yeah. Uh, where he got third, The uh, I remember the Latina vote. Uh, was kind of splitting towards uh, Bernie Sanders for the most part, uh, especially in Nevada. But um, yeah, but then not only did Joe Biden win, he won like huge in South Carolina, and then every other moderate Democrat he convinced to for them to you know just drop out, you know, so they can get a cabinet position later on. Uh, and then it was just him and Bernie Sanders. And uh, he pulled off a pretty, uh, Joe Biden pulled off a pretty big win on that Super Tuesday after South Carolina. He won Texas, a whole bunch of other states, and then just kind of clawed uh, into the front runner's seat again. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I will say Bernie Sanders definitely campaigned for Joe Biden a lot more than he did for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> it's like, right, Joe didn't like, have to oh. fucking steal it from Bernie in sixteen. That's also true. That that was you know you know Joe Biden wanted because he wanted. There wasn't right. any like little bullshit going on. Yeah, where they just cr- they didn't crown Joe Biden the nominee and then right. Yeah, in sixteen they yeah. were just like, "This is your pill. Take your goddamn medicine." Shut. Up. That's definitely the feeling. Shut up, yeah. you stupid young people. Shut up. Stop asking me for money. Yeah. Take this time around. Take this sec- Here you young people. Yeah. Now shut up. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay. Noted. There, you happy? We said noted. <laughs> Years. So. Years of resentment. That's what twenty sixteen and twenty twenty are going to engender. And the cynicism wheel keeps spinning. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, 
Stop paying attention to politics. Doesn't matter. We're going to choose who we want. Just pay attention to your 401k and, and shut up. Just shut it. <laughs> I think it will be interesting. I'm interested anyway. See what the next four years bring with Joe Biden, because I mean, people say you know he's the same old, same old. You know, as far as you know, elected officials. Uh, but as far as president, he's kind of not when you think about it, because he has the most federal experience out of anyone who's ever been president. He was like 47 years in the Senate, eight years as vice president. Yes. I think he's the last few guys. Old. Well, so it's pretty much the exact opposite of Donald Trump, who has zero government experience at all. He really has zero experience at Brock... anything. Anyway, keep going. Yeah. Then he had a Barack Obama, which I think he was in his first term as senator when he ran for president, wasn't he? Correct. So not a lot of federal experience. Then before him was George W. Bush, who was a governor, so he had zero federal experience. Te- you know, he, technically, he had executive experience. <laughs> and then before him was Bill Clinton, who also had zero federal experience. Who was also a governor. Mm-hmm. So, so Joe Biden knows everyone in Congress, basically, especially like the leadership. You know, like Mitch McConnell. So. Can he actually do something, which would be the opposite of what's been happening, which is a whole bunch of nothing, essentially? It'll be very interesting to see what happens if Georgia gets its act together and boots out uh, Leffler and Purdue. Yeah, that'd also be interesting. Not just from who will run the Senate, but... If they lose, a big part of that blame goes to Donald Trump. Basically, because basically of all just, of it. They threw their weight behind him. They they never hesitated. Well, that and, that and they're both really terrible people. Genuinely. Who, Anybody with $800 million is not a nice person. Well, and also they, you know, basically did some insider trading there. Uh, when they heard about COVID-19 and said, um, what I will do about that to prepare for COVID-19 is take all my money out of the market so that I remain rich. Right. And there's a specific Not, there's a specific act, the Stock Act, stop senators from being stupid shitheads. I don't know what the exact acronym is. Yeah, and then they they go and do it. And then that wasn't that wasn't just a Republican thing either. Diane Feinstein got caught doing that shit too. Sure. But she's not. She's, she's not, not running for office, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the eyes of the whole country are not on her. That's politics, baby. Pretty much these two. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this uh, shit. Yeah, this shit. That's true. So we'll see. Yep. And then. Uh, then everyone knows what happened at the end of the election and what happened afterwards. Joe Biden won, I think by, what was it, like 7.5 million? Probably going up. I don't even know if they, do they have all the counts in? It's probably still, just about, probably still some absentees. Which, I th- but I think he won like by like five point something percent of the, like the national vote, which actually is not too far away from the polls, which had him up by like eight points. It was still pretty close. Overall, yeah, yes, it, I mean, it was good. But, I mean, when... Yeah, if it was not this close, there would not have been this many lawsuits. I don't know about that. Just how baseless these lawsuits are. It's over 50, it's over 50 lawsuits at this point. Yeah, but 50 all attempts. Are bullshit. Fucking <laughs> Almost crazy. All. And they made Georgia recount three times. Three t- yeah. times. And then they try to make them recount again by uh, ch- checking the uh, signatures. Yeah. I guess, I don't know what, I, I guess past signatures, but then you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to check everyone. Yeah. And not everyone has a 
you know, does the exact same signature every single fucking time. The signature check is the dumbest fucking thing. Because you're t- sometimes yeah. some of those records are, oh, this was your signature when you were 16 and you first got a license. I barely knew how to write when I was 16, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then, then it would just become, you have to call the person and say, hey, did you vote? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it checks out. <laughs> I have to ask every single person who voted if they voted. Yeah. Let's do this eight, then, eight million more times. It's a pretty efficient use of yeah. people's time. But hey, you know what? I'm fine with it. I like a I, I like I like a ruthless audit every now and again. A nice stress test. It should happen a lot more frequently. Mm-hmm. So not even that pissed off about the, then, the recounting. Yeah. Yeah, the nice part was uh, when they did a recount in Wisconsin, the the Trump campaign had to pay for it, and they basically paid to lose by another 700 votes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think their checks ever cleared. Did they actually pay for that? I don't know. I thought they were they were stonewalling it. I mean, they did. I mean, they're they're on the line for it, but I mean, <laughs> whatever. What do you think? Trump got rich by writing checks. <laughs> that ain't how that shit works. No. Yeah. He got rich by saying, hey, I'm in all this debt. I can't pay you back unless I have more money to make more money to pay off the debt. Yeah. Duh, that makes sense. No doubt. Yeah. But, uh, I thought everybody would uh, be able to look past his stupid, uh, stupid ideas. Yeah. We were talking about my. We were talking about my brother. Should we? Did, did we already mention his name? Should we? Should we black out people's actual names? Let's call him Isaiah <laughs> or Amadeus. Do we talk to him? Do we talk to him, talk about him on the show or like before the show? I think we talked about him before the show. I think so too. Yeah. Okay. We'll call him Isaiah. Sure. So he voted for Trump and I thought that he wasn't because of the aftermath of George George Floyd's killing and all the riots the riots all the some of them were riots some of them were some riots. people were rioting they took advantage of the situation but for the most part it was peaceful protesting specifically yeah. the Lafayette Park protest right outside of the White House and when Trump gassed and beat those protesters back to hold up a fucking book that he's never read in front of a church he's never been in. I thought my brother had actually made a moral choice to say, okay, this man's a snake. He's a piece of shit. I'm not voting for him. But then what's he do? Goes and votes for him because of st- uh, his fucking alleged tax policy which is going to somehow give him more money. Yeah. Politics definitely ran right through the middle of my family. I don't know about you. Um, no. Almost everyone voted for Joe Biden. Um, uh, pretty sure just, uh, my, one of my aunts didn't. Yeah. And but, none of uh, them will point to social upheaval as one of the reasons. But, uh, yeah. I think it's, well, that's a good segue into the, uh, the Black Lives Matters uh, movement. And that's and the that, irony of it. That was, is that Isaiah Jeremiah, whatever his name is going to be, he actually marched in one of the solidarity marches. And this was out in, you know, it's, it's one thing for me to do it in Chicago. I was like, whatever. Everybody did it. I mean, well, not everybody, but, you know, one of the biggest ones in Chicago was like 30,000 people at Union Park. But he did it out in the burbs. And the burbs of Chicago are Republican red, through and through. And he marched in solidarity at one of them. And when, he, when you march in solidarity at one of those, he was reporting people... Just like regular people out on their porches screaming the worst shit 
at, 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 at their neighbors. It was insane. Uh, and he's yeah, and he's still voting. And he's still voted for fucking Trump. Crazy time, and then but kind of just looking back at it. Um, yeah, yeah, most of the protests were very peaceful. Uh, I mean, th- there was some rioting and a little bit of looting going on. Yeah, you got that not right. To the, not to the extent of what some of the conservative media's media was saying. If there was, like, the whole country would be burning down. Right. Yeah, they called every uh, single one of them some kind of a riot. Yeah. And it wasn't every single one of them. It was maybe, you know, whatever. It's like one fucking... It happens once, that means it happened every single time. I did see some fun videos of, uh... What, what, I think it was a car dealership in uh, Kenosha after Kyle Rittenhouse murdered that uh, other protester. Mm. Uh, one of uh, Somebody was just meandering by, and they were taking video of the car, a, a car dealership before it was up in flames. This was the part that didn't make any sense to me, is that, dude, just sitting there watching it sort of smolder a little bit in, like, one of the SUVs, you totally could have put the shit out. (laughs) And then later on in the video, everything's in flames. Everything is burned out. Like, you better better take this video down. I think the insurance company's going to want to talk to you. (laughs) Like, uh, I think it's this guy's fault. Like, yeah, that lawsuit, Uh that, that, uh... That court case never... That hasn't happened yet. You're going to have to tune in for 2021's recap. All right. And, um... Where were we on Black Lives Matter? Um, I had just got done uh, talking about... Uh, whatever his name is now. Kenosha. Mr. Dead to me. And yeah, we were talking about Kenosha. I made a joke about something the insurance company going after that guy for not putting that fire out <laughs> oh my god Northwestern's winning and they're ranked weird yeah but um but so looking back at it like one thing I know the conservative media kind of picked up on was the amount of people like at those uh, protests, you know, not social distancing. And why is it okay for you to be able to protest while not practicing social distancing, and, but not be able to do anything else, like you know, like party. Right. It felt, uh, I'll admit, it felt a little uh, hypocritical. But it also felt more important to, uh, to go out, show some solidarity. Okay. Yeah. And you're not really hanging out. It's not the same as going indoors, it's not the same at all. Yeah, but there were a large mass of people very close to each other. You'd think it, you know, it, it increased the transmission more than not doing that. If everyone just stayed at home. With the power of hindsight, I think that if you had symptoms, you wouldn't be out and about. If I had symptoms, I wouldn't have been out. Yeah. And it did seem that... Uh, for the most part, people were wearing masks while they were out and about, and also it was you know, outside, so... Yeah, lest we forget who was actually protesting or and who was actually standing in solidarity. It wasn't a whole... It wasn't exactly the anti-mask crowd. No. But, uh, yeah, I it's a point that doesn't come up a whole lot um, again because most media is push more yeah it, it's more left-leaning you know 
as far as right leaning media, you got Fox, and then you have all the crazy fucking uh, things like One American Network and whatever. But mm-hmm. th- that that was something that you know, like every other large gathering, they said, "Oh, you know, there's a pandemic going on. You shouldn't do this." But not, they didn't really say that for the protests, which again, like you said, it was a bit hypocritical. But um, you know, again understand why they did it that you know they felt it was that important and also they they typically took better precautions than people just you know at large gatherings that you know weren't protesting like you know spring break and you could definitely say uh, it's much more important than spring breaks uh, going on large motorcycle uh, I don't know what you call that. You remember that? Oh, Sturgis? There's like a whole... That large gathering of motorcycle enthusiasts? Yeah, Sturgis. They were all ri- riding together? Yeah, that. Which was a huge super spreader. That is... I hate giving free clout to other uh, things or people, but All Gas No Brakes is hilarious, in case you're not watching it. Uh, that's that guy who just drives around the country in an RV... And, and interviews people. Yeah, I think you you told you mentioned that to me. Like, uh, yeah, he, he he did a few of like you know, Florida people who were mm-hmm. whoa, <laughs> right, right, right. So there was that, but he also went to Sturgis. It was yeah, fantastic. And he was at least wearing a mask, but 90% of everyone that he interviewed was not. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. And so there's that, and there's a f- few other, uh, whatchamacallit, critiques on the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, one of them was um, that, like, there are certain people within the movement that were almost acting like black supremacists, and then, like, Terry Crews came on, and it's like, hey, make sure that we keep at Black Bi- Lives Matter, not Black Lives Better, and then he got backlash, and also, you know, and... and people on the other side of it you know use that as a way to kind of uh, invalidate the whole thing and and that's the thing you know you get these like few people who who are basically using the the form the medium or like the platform to talk about their own bullshit that's only tangentially related, if at all. Mm-hmm. And then people say, oh, look at that asshole. Not the whole movement's fucked. Sure, yeah. Anything that makes it so you don't have to I, think I, about, you know, your own privilege or any of the other shit. Yeah, and I know within the Jewish community, there was, especially from conservative Jews, saying like, oh, you know, there are leaders in the Black Lives Matter movement who are blatantly anti-Semitic, uh... And that's that is true. Um, yeah, it's, what was his name? Farrakhan and a f- few other people, and also, uh, you know, very uh, anti Zionist people in there, too. But then it's like there's a few of those people, and if you just and you're and what exactly are you saying? Like, you're basically just using them as what they're saying, they're not. They're taking a message. They're saying a different message than the Black Lives Matter movement in the platform of Black Lives Matter. So you're basically just discounting what people, what the mass of people are saying to a few people. Some of them are in leadership roles, are saying that are different from the, you know, the main message. Exactly. There's extremists in every group, and if you want to latch on to them for your argument and that's the only argument you have well you're saying something about yourself 
That's a pretty weak argument, yeah. Yeah. It's barely an argument at all. All you're saying is the most obvious shit that we've all known since the beginning of time. Do you actually want to talk about the issue? Do you actually want to talk about why everybody's just a tad bit upset? Or do you just want to try and dismiss this so you don't have to think about it and you can go back to, I don't know, watching the Great British Bake Off or some dumb shit? I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. So. Blinders, man. Everybody wants to put them on. Yeah. Some people come around, some people don't. I think my mother's finally coming around. Not to be in a. Uh, any kind of a liberal kind of voter that's never going to happen because of the abortion issue but uh, you know as far as trying not to be an overt racist anymore I think she's making some progress <laughs> well that's good <laughs> yeah, so yeah there there you go Mi- hey, mission accomplished that well yeah I mean if everyone became that much more racist you know, from wherever your base was. Right. I mean, that's serious progress. So, it's not about being perfect. It's about being better. Continually trying to get better. You got that right. Holy shit! I just watched uh, "I Am Not Your I Am Not Your Negro" by James uh, the James Baldwin notes on Netflix. Mm. Okay. Damn. Some of the clips that they have patched together, it's really well done. Uh, some so it's not like uh, it's tough to describe. It's not quite a documentary, but it it plays like it a little bit. And just some of the point, some of the clips that I would just wanted to bring up were uh, like the worst shit ever you've ever seen. From yeah, I mean you got people like waving like swastikas and stuff like that, and 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 the Confederate battle standard, the stars and bars, like when. Specifically, it was the clips from Chicago and Chicago Land when Martin Luther King showed up to uh, march for housing rights in Chicago, one of the worst segregated cities still to this day. And mm-hmm. some of the clips that they showed of, of just because it focused not just on the black figures, but on the white people who were pro the counter counter protesting any of his marches. And these are just just the vile look on their faces, and what they were, you know, waving around and yelling at them. Yeah. Uh, so long as we're not there anymore. Yeah. Because my mother would constantly say, "Oh, well, I, you know, I grew up in Chicago." It's like, yeah, Ma, you grew up in that time period, <laughs> from when these clips were happening. Like, I know you were just a kid. I mean, she was a teenager at the time. But yeah, I think you need to look at some of this shit and kind of check yourself, check, check what you're saying. Mm-hmm. But it's tough. Yeah. It's painful to even look at that and know that your homeland and your place that you're from is associated with this shit. Yeah. I mean, it, in a way, it still is. They just kind of churched it up a bit. Uh, where you have Donald Trump saying, oh, you know, I'm going to save the, uh, you know, the suburbs, you know, the, you know, the communities. Exactly. Like, what are you saving it from? Right, right. You're just, like, not saying it explicitly. Right. It's no longer explicit. You it's imply just, it. Yes, exactly. It's just implied. And we can have a whole argument about if that's better. To me, I think it is. Depends on who you ask, though. I mean, it's better in that the general population knows, you know, logically that it's wrong. That now you're just like basically you're feeding off their people's base fears, and uh, it ended up not working, at least not this time. So that's also good. Um, so yeah. But, you know, then you, know, you make the counter-argument, like, well, now we're not even getting to the heart of the problem, because they're not... It, it's harder to call them out on it, because they're because they're implying it, and they can just say, oh, no, that's not what we meant, we meant blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it's good that, in a way, like, it's kind of 
gone into the shadows instead of you know being in the light because it can't survive there. But now it's kind of it's harder to stamp out the last bit of it. I'd say, or it's it's not the last bit, but the it's much smaller now. And that's still that is a, in the right general direction. Maybe it's a little bit more lateral than people would like, but I still think it's in the it's right kind of. It's in the right direction. It's like diagonal. Sure. Take whichever route gets us to uh, not being afraid of each other anymore, mm-hmm. so that we can talk about the issues that really matter. Uh, Those Ruski bastards. Oh yeah, they're fucking Communist. fucking pieces of shit. Totally. But not even all of them. Just people over there fucking fighting for no. what's right. So much so no, that they're, not. you know, they, you can't even be an opposition political candidate over there without getting poisoned. Yeah. Or, you know, Through your killing, your, killing yourself by, you know, <laughs> shooting yourself in the back of the head. Before you throw yourself out the window. <laughs> While doing it right behind a garbage truck. <laughs> so that the cameras don't see that you're actually doing it. Yeah, no doubt. That's something else that happened this year. Yet another, I mean, uh, Navalny. Yeah. Opposition pro-presidential candidate. Poisoned. Again? I don't know if this is his second time around. I didn't say it was again. I said... He said that he got poisoned through his underpants. No, I'm asking if it was again. I don't know if this is the second time for him. I think no. I know it's the second major profile person. There was that spy a few years ago. Uh, Yeah, getting poisoned, yeah. Yeah, he got poisoned. And his daughter. Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of a Ukrainian president or prime minister who got severely disfigured. After he got poisoned. Mm. But yeah, I mean, there was a f- former, I think it was like a former Russian spy or something. Yeah. Or, I don't know. So, he, he got poisoned in the UK right. with his daughter. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then Russia's like, no, we didn't do it. Yeah, it plays into their hand pretty well. It makes them look a lot more competent than they actually are. Same thing with all the election stuff. They never actually got proven to have influenced the election, or actually having touched the election. They just got proved to. It just made it makes it. It's in everybody's head. Like, oh, if they attempted, they must have succeeded, even though they they suck at that too. Yeah, they either they suck or the. Trump campaign sucked. Or both of them sucked. Mm Mm-hmm. Because there... I mean, there was some... shitty shit going down. Again, it didn't seem to amount to anything. Uh, I think the only thing they could really get the Russians on for 2016 was just those troll farms uh, spraying disinformation. They indicted and sanctioned a lot of... uh... A lot of Russians. Almost two, yeah. almost two dozen of them. They'll never see prison time because they're overseas and we'll never get them over here, but if they ever try to travel, they're kind of boned. If they ever try to open up a mm-hmm. checking account, oh, got them. Does Trump getting impeached, does that count as 2020? Yeah. Because the vote officially happened in 2020. Yeah, he got acquitted in 2020. Right. So, yeah, we could talk about that. And um, one Republican senator throws his weight behind yeah, it. Pierre Delecto. Pierre Delecto. I really wish he had uh, worked that Twitter account a little bit harder. <laughs> that, uh, Thanks, Mitt. <laughs> Unbelievable. I was trying so, real yeah. hard, trying it, real hard to convince my mother to, you know, look at this, look at this guy, because I sent her his his speech uh, on the Senate floor was was really good. Who Mitt Romney's? Yeah. Mm. 
And I'll say that yeah. I don't say that about a lot of Mitt Romney's speeches because he's still kind of a fucking piece of shit. But at least he did the right thing. <laughs> yeah, for democracy. But um, yeah, it was pretty funny how. I mean, the evidence was so overwhelming that the Republic, most Republicans didn't even bother contesting it. They were just saying, well, it doesn't rise to the level of being kicked out of office. And uh, what was the other thing? Yeah, it, and it, it was like, like some of these, like uh, the, the senator from Maine, what's her face? Collins. Yeah, Colin said, well, uh, I know he uh, he learned his lesson not to do that anymore, so yeah, it's, it's cool. Fucking break. And then, like, right after that, they asked, like, hey, so did you learn your lesson? It's like, nope, I didn't learn anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Suck my balls. Yeah. <laughs> like, a <in> complete <laughs> yeah. contradiction to what Colin said. Yeah, she didn't have a conversation with him about what his feelings were. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's just covering her own ass. Yeah, she's covering her own ass. She understands that in her state, there's enough Republican voters to kick her ass out. And so she was voting to stay in office, not voting to do what was right. Yeah. Making her my piece of shit for that day. <laughs> and uh, e even, like, it, it's not even, like, Trump's lawyers, like, said that he he didn't do it. It's like... It's so, like, yeah, he did it. So what? <laughs> and then they made, like, this insane argument that uh, it was f whatever is good for Trump is good for the country. So what he, so by helping himself, he helped the country, and that's what the president's supposed to do. And this crazy back-ass word of logic. Sure, sure, yeah, you know. It's like he helped the country because he helped himself. Yeah, when the president... Which is helping the country because he is the country. Bert, don't you know that when the president does it, it's not illegal? So far that has been true. I have to resign now. <laughs> That's my favorite quote from Nixon. I have to resign now? No. When the, pres yeah. when the president does it, <laughs> it's not illegal. He said that shit on national TV. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't president at the time, but it was only like two years after the fact. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't... I guess he, yeah. There's no repercussions to him saying that, really, since Ford pardoned him for... <laughs> before any charges were even brought up. You know what I love about the pardons? Is the idea that y you can't accept a pardon without admitting guilt. So, yeah. yes, you were pardoned eh, because you were guilty, you piece <laughs> of fucking shit. <laughs> of all the pardons, I think my favorite is... Oh, damn it, I don't know the guy's name. It was some guy... <sighs> Pause for station identification. Hang on. I'm going to look up this guy's name because I think it's kind of funny. All right. Sorry, there's going to be some mouse clicking here. It's funny because this guy is a... I think he was arrested back in 1952 for moonshining. Nice. Trump pardons man who made moonshine in Oklahoma. Oh, yes. Alfred Lee Crum was 19 when he pled guilty and served three years of probation and paid a $250 fine. Uh, apparently that entitles him to a presidential pardon. The White House doesn't even know where he now lives. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Wait a sec. You said he just served months? On probation? He served three years of probation and paid a $250 fine. This was back in 1952 for helping his wife's uncle illegally 
moonshine. That's a weird pardon to waste your time on. I, I yeah, I don't even know what to say. But that's my favorite one because it's the only one that's, you know, any good. Never mind the murderers he pardoned. Those Blackwater pardons were just disgusting. Mm-hmm. But it you know pays to be connected. Yeah. Well, there's also the Kim Kardashian pardons where Kim Kardashian came up and said, hey, you should pardon this person. Right. All right. Yeah, right. One of those pardons was actually because of, it was like the cellmate of a previous person who was pardoned. <laughs> Which I don't have, a, you know, whatever. She, she served her time. She was like running a drug house or something like that. 20 years in prison for doing that is like, Okay. If you show any amount of <laughs> remorse after that, I think you've paid your debt to society. But those fucking mur those Blackwater mercenaries that shot a bunch of civilians in Iraq, that was fucking mm. gross. And, uh, that, the, that, that takes us to uh, another interesting thing that happened in 2020. Kanye West running for president, which, that was just special... Uh, of how if you how say so, I don't know. I mean, you know, mental health is really t a, a touchstone for me and my family. You know, so <laughs> clearly the man is is a little bit unhinged. He needs to be on his meds. Well, I wasn't. He needs to be on his meds. Well, I'm not. A, yeah, I wasn't even really going to mention you know him like going crazy on that that one. You, you uh, can't call it that. <laughs> him losing his shit. Uh, during that one uh, campaign rally, I suppose it technically was, uh, I, I was talking about how badly the Trump administration were pushing him to run for president because he was really half-assing it. Like he, <laughs> there's like a whole bunch of states that he he couldn't be on the ballot for. Uh, there's this this one in, I forget the state, but like like his person was like running into the uh, the election office to, to, to drop off all the paperwork and she got there like right as time expired <laughs> and the, the people told her to fuck off <laughs> oh my I really it's like I, what I got here right 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 before you know right as you know the time was expiring it's like yeah but you're expecting us to do work after closing time you do know this is the government, right? We we don't do that. And also, we don't want Kanye West to run in our state. <laughs> and also, you are technically, you know, over on time. So, yeah, he wasn't even a quali but, he wasn't a qualified candidate in uh, Chicago or Illinois. But even working at my polling station, there was still somebody who decided to throw their vote away. We're just like shaking our fucking heads. The the list of qualified candidates. You have to be a qualified write-in candidate. It's on the wall. <laughs> yeah, we have a paper list. If you want it, you just ask for it. But that's another thing with, about our awesome democracy. People don't even realize you can't just write in whoever the hell you want. Again, it, it was pretty much just Trump trying to push him into running so that he could skim off a few votes from... Joe Biden. And he did. He skimmed, uh, looks like, 60,000 votes. Not quite enough. Still, that uh, just goes to show you, some people will buy anything. Alright, what month are we in? We started jumping around there. I don't know. Yeah, we're just kind of jumping all over the place. Um, I mean, I think the summer was really... That was like the big thing, the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, and then after that, I mean, it, it was pretty much just the COVID and the you know presidential campaign and the debates just took center stage for that whole entire time during the fall. Yeah, that was fun. And it's fun seeing the sitting president not 
completely lay an egg when he's asked to disavow white nationalism. <laughs> and he can't do it. Can't bring himself to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I straight up asked my family. I just put, I threw it out there. And I normally don't like delving into politics with them in like the, the group chat that we have going. But um, I threw it out there because I just couldn't, I, I couldn't not do, say something. It was just so fucking gross and despicable. I wanted, I, I seriously, I just asked everybody, I was like, how? How do you defend this? And either nobody watched it, or they just glossed over it because there's hundreds of messages on that thing. But nobody responded to it. Mm. It's possible nobody actually watched the debate because they're they don't really say anything in those fucking debates. Yeah. Well, also that particular debate was really hard to watch. It wasn't a debate at all. Even the one, yeah. the one Republican guy in my office, <laughs> also didn't want to have, didn't have anything to say about it. Fucking coward! Defend your monster! <laughs> you threw the pokeball, um, and this monster came out. Defend it! Nope. Yep. Nope. Didn't have um, anything to say about it. Um, taxes, stock market. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. You ready to go? Do you need a nap now? Okay. Dave needs a nap now. Dave, go nap nap. Dave, no work here no more? Dave, go bye. Yeah. Yeah, those, uh, those debates really didn't go the way Trump wanted them to go. Uh, the first one was just him just shouting at everybody. Right. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't a great look. And then he can't. Then he canceled the second one. Right. Also not a great one. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, that that was bad. Uh, I look like an asshole now. A, a bigger asshole now. Oh shit. Uh, then he actually he did okay on the third one, but like definitely not as good as he wanted to be. He wanted the whole thing to be about Hunter Biden, but he's like, but but then he like he got caught in a trap by Joe Biden when he like threw out yeah well you had a Chinese bank account and then <laughs> then Trump totally forgot about Hunter Biden and then just like, <laughs> like oh well you see uh, uh, the thing about that was it's like he, he couldn't just brush that off uh -huh. uh, he, he had to like <laughs> spend like all his, his time uh, defending that Chinese bank account uh, and then they moved on from that and then, yeah, it was, it was pretty much done. Like, I want to talk about this Chinese bank account now. Chinese bank account. Sorry for the keyboard clicks. Secret Chinese bank account, eh? What a stupid question. Does Trump have business in China? Everybody's got business in China. Yeah. That's the problem. Their market is just so big and so juicy, they can't, nobody can help themselves. Then speaking of China, and what happened in early 2020, that everyone pretty much forgot, was those Hong Kong protests. Remember that? Yeah, that was going on for weeks. Yeah. It was brutal. They finally shoved that uh, national security law through. And uh, surprise, surprise, I think just recently... All the uh, a few of the the student activists got caught on a boat trying to make it to Taiwan, and they're not going back to Hong Kong. They're going to the main. No. They're going to get tried on the mainland, which is 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 anybody is it? Yeah, you know, I don't know what the money is on whether or not they're going to die live. <laughs> it's like how long they have. Well, it's how long you could survive the grueling conditions of, you know, slave mining. Yeah, that cotton in uh, Xinjiang isn't going to pick itself. Yeah, that was, a, that was also a really big thing for a while. And then 
Then when the COVID-19 hit, everyone basically forgot about that. Which I'm sure they were nice and happy about. Yeah. And then the year wrapped up and everything went back to normal. So, that's just about all I got. Um, we had a football season, uh, college and professional, and it looks like Alabama's going to win a national championship again. So, yay, everything's back to normal. Yeah. Fuckers. You're thinking, well, it's been three whole years since we won a national championship, so, you know, we're due. I want to know if Saban was out there in the jungle collecting bats <laughs> and rubbing them all over as many pigs as possible. I want to see his travel schedule. So I think he did. The, I think he did. I think he brought it. He spread it intentionally. Why is the media covering that? I don't know about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the other people getting elected, which we kind of went over, but just quickly. Tommy Tupperville, the the picture of mediocrity uh, in the coaching world became the center in Alabama. Yeah, just amazing. Alabama, where wow comes to go. Ugh. I mean, really, if you say you're a Republican and just say the stupid line items and just, you know, just, just, get, just read from the script, then you're fine. Well, let's just put blinders on and not give a flying fuck. I mean, you don't even have to do that. Again, like I said, you just have to not be a child molester in Alabama, mm -hmm. and you win. Bingo. So, let's see. Anything else? Yeah, that's about all I had. Um, yeah, that's 2020 in a nutshell. In an hour and a half long nutshell. <laughs> uh, I'm sure like 20 minutes of that was... Yeah, it just does Probably it now. You can chop as much as you want. Yeah. Which I'm sure you do anyway. Uh, so... <clears throat> so um, yeah. Oh well, we didn't talk about why it, we didn't talk about why it was good for us. <laughs> because I started the episode with this is a great year for me. <laughs> didn't talk about uh, that at all. I mean, I, I, I mean, I kind I of mean, mentioned it. It was like the the working from home was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to work a side gig with the U.S. Census. That was fucking awesome. Not right. not the general. Yeah, paid for that. Yeah, no, thanks for that. Appreciate it. I counted three people. <laughs> How much did you get paid for counting those three people? Oh, my God. It probably cost, for each one of those people, it probably cost the American taxpayer somewhere to the tune of, I want to say $1,100 a piece. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I discounted a bunch of other addresses that were no longer valid. So. Yeah. You're welcome, yeah, America. Just, they, Illinois yeah. lost two representatives. <laughs> Good job, man. What, you think that's going to happen by itself? Somebody's got to get out there and walk. So that helped. Mm -hmm. I now have a savings. <laughs> yeah, good job. You helped Wyoming. I helped everybody. After I got laid off, uh, I got another job that paid more. So that was cool. Bingo. All right. Everybody came out on top, other than the 340,000 dead people from this uh, horrendous virus. Yeah, and all the people who are, you know, related to them. Right. In memoriam. Terrible stuff. Well, hopefully we'll... Try to do better then next time. Yep. Which is all you can yeah. do anyway. Assuming civilization's still standing, it should be better next year. Yeah, we'll see. Just wait for the next uh, environmental disaster. 
or cybersecurity attack, or I don't know, intergalactic plague. Yeah. All right, I think that just about does it. Uh, you can write us in at hope something sticks at gmail dot com. Um, and yeah, and if uh, anyone has any suggestions on what we should talk about, we'll take it under consideration if you write in. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to write. We forgot to talk about sex. Oops. <laughs> it's great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Have a good one. Peace.